Today I'd like to talk a little bit about the big cats of the world. Now, the first question is where did they come from? Well, about 34 million years ago, a small cat uh, was in Africa and Eurasia, about the size of a bobcat, 20 pounds, and it was the cat that was the basis of uh, all the cats today, and time refined those cats, but didn't change them a lot. Gave them a more flexible spine, gave them uh, front claws that retract into a sheath, gave them uh, jaws that were stronger, uh, teeth that were designed to eat meat, and so over time, those cats diversified, um, and about 10,000 years ago, one line of those cats, uh, the saber-toothed cat, along with the woolly mammoth and other animals, kind of disappeared from Earth, and today, there are about 36 species of cats. Uh, they're diversified, and they came across the uh, all of Eurasia, uh, Asia, South America, North America. And about 9,000 years ago, there's some evidence that cats were starting to be domesticated and primarily for rodent control. And by the time we were talking about the mathematics evolving and all that, the Egyptians had decided cats were something cool and uh, they integrated them into their society and religion and all other aspects. And we humans, who have a propensity of uh, messing up most things in nature, haven't screwed up the cat too much because just fluffy outdoors, and you can see the aspect of any of the big cats or any other cat is in the world. Now, the big cats, they uh, are all in one family, a feline family, and uh, they're all carnivores. And there are five cats that are formally designated as big cats. Uh, tiger lions, uh, jaguar leopard, snow leopard. But uh, you'll also find included when you go on Google sometimes the cheetah or the cougar, puma, mountain lions, kind of same animal except where he lives has different names. Today we're going to look at uh, lions, jaguars, leopards, cheetahs, uh, and lions. And we'll start in India, uh, the land of the bagel tiger. And when I move to the various animals, I'm going to spend just one few minutes or seconds, kind of a tribute to them that comes out of some kind of literature. And this happens to be written by William Blake, Blake about 1790. A uh, British author, and you know, tiger, tiger, burning bright in the forest of the night. One immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry. When the stars threw down their spears and watered heaven with their tears, did he smile his work to see? Did he who made the lamb make thee? Okay. Bengal tiger is uh, the largest number of the species, and but it's not very many, 2,500, and uh, the rest of them, they're all endangered. Uh, International Union for Conservation of Nature is the agent who puts out nationally the rating of what's endangered, threatened, et cetera. It's called a red list. Uh, they're the biggest of the cats. Uh, the males, a good size, healthy 550 pounds. So if you look at Fluffy, who is over eating and is maybe 13 pounds, just kind of figure out what that would be uh, in terms of a tiger. There's the rare white tiger. Uh, you've seen them in the show in Las Vegas or on TV. They're similar to the white uh, furred black bear that I showed in my introductory marks that one time. They're due to a double recessive gene. And uh, all of them, they're currently solitary. They don't have a social structure and living together. Uh, in India, most all tigers live on protect protected reserves now. They're not wandering around. And when you look at uh, 
You know, 2,300 tigers, and you look at over a billion people, it's not, the ratio is not very much there. They can live 10 to 15 years, probably in the wild closer to 10 to 12 years. Um, they're estimated to kill about 85 humans a day, a year, but look at 46,000 killed by cobras in India each year. Here's a picture of a five-year-old male. He's headed for a water hole. He's in the prime of his life. He's now sexually mature, will be a mating tiger, can fend off other tigers. We went and motored around to the back of that water hole and came upon him after he'd been getting a drink time. We got there and he was relaxing, doing what your cat does a lot, grooming. We watched him for a bit, and the philosophy that we operate mostly when you're with photographers so out there is don't disturb the animal, don't cause him stress. So when he said, it's time to leave, we decided to leave. <laughs> so here's a series of picture of a tiger on the hunt. Now, you see the track there. In India, they've controlled these preserves, reserves very carefully. You go in, uh, you're licensed to go in three hours in the morning and three in the afternoon. You're a guide and driver, and you have to have your passport or at least a copy of it. You're checked in, and you have to stay on the pass. You can't go cross country. In Africa, it's a little different situation. Anyway, he's out there, and he's going to get himself lunch, and he's after a spotted deer, which is a small deer, one of the three in India. And uh, he enters into that tall grass. He's quite well conceived. You can see concealed. You can see where the striping uh, follows the grass. If we were watching him, in which I was, obviously, that's what I saw. But here's what the deer would see, because all mammals, except for some primate. Eight, uh, primates and humans are colorblind. So that, that orange color is not a problem. So all you deer hunters and elk hunters who are worried about your uh, bright day glow orange vests and stuff, don't worry about it. They can't see it. He moves slowly. Sometimes he would move only two feet at a time and stop. And before he was ready to grab his meal, he paused. You see his intense, his ears are back. He's gauging his charge. Well, I got excited and was watching him. This wasn't a very good picture, obviously. Uh, but he didn't catch his uh, intended prey. He grabbed a little fawn. And if you see, let's see, up here. That's the mom actually skidding away, and that's what happened. So he missed what he was after, but he got it. And if you can look at that one, you can see the mother in the background watching her child be carried off by a tiger. And there he is. Uh, you see the tiger uh, has, that's just a snack. I mean, he didn't get much of a meal out of that. Here's another s short series of pictures. This is a young male, about three years old. He had a brother, a uh, sister. Those two and the mom were off the side. He's, he's being told to leave home now at three years old. That's enough hanging around with mom. And he came out, and as I told you, we were on roads all the time. And he just flopped down in the middle of the road. <laughs> now what happens is you're out there and you're signed districts and so forth, and you're not all moving around with all these vehicles, but as soon as somebody spots an animal, they get on their cell phones uh, and or radios, and everybody comes in. But we can't leave, because the tiger is there. And we have to be out, because the driver and your guide, if you are late exiting the uh, park, they're privileges are suspended for a period of time. And if they do it several times, their licenses are revoked. So they're anxious to leave. So some people started revving up their motors, 
but he was determined to just stay where he was. And he said, what? You want to move? Now, I attribute human characteristics, language, traits to animals. Uh, I confess that I think that way. And all of you who talk to Fluffy at home do the same thing. So anyway, so he decided to leave. And as far as I'm concerned, he said, I hope you guys are happy. <laughs> okay, some other tiger stuff. Uh, what are spots in the back of the ear for, those white spots? Well, I try to find out. And uh, there's one theory, they're false eyes, so that when the predator is attacking a tiger, they think even if it's coming from the back, he's looking at them. Another thing is their uh, cub flag so the cub can follow. First of all, the false eyes make no sense because there are no natural predators for a tiger, and who's going to sneak up on the back of one anyway? But anyway, it, and the only person who knows is a tiger, and they ain't going to tell us why those spots are there. Uh, no tiger has the same stripes. Now, uh, what, would you, what would happen if you shaved one of these tigers? Besides having a ticked off tiger, obviously, what you would see is the stripes, because the pigmentation that's in the fur is also in the skin. So you would have a striped, non-furred tiger, whatever. So uh, goodbye to these guys, and hello to the lions. This guy is a 11-year-old male. He was the uh, chief in charge of a pride of about 14 lions. And uh, Lions, you all know the song, Weem Away. Uh, that was written in uh, about 1920, and the original language was Zulu. Uh, Linde uh, sold it for, recorded and sold it for a couple hundred bucks. In the 60s, it was uh, translated into English. Tonkins and the Weavers made a fortune off of it, but poor Solomon didn't get much of that. So, in the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. Near the village, the peaceful village, the lion sleeps tonight. Hush, my darling, don't fear, my darling, the lion sleeps tonight. Okay, here's a series of picture of lions doing what they do when they're awake. That's hunting. And... Uh, in this picture, this is my favorite female in the foreground there. She's a matriarch, and you can see uh, kind of here. Oh, in the background, there's a second lion that's lying next to her. I think that's her lieutenant or the next to take over. And they're up on this little mound. And if you can envision, we're sitting here watching, and out in front of her are seven or eight adult lionesses all waiting uh, to start the hunt. And what are they going to hunt? They're going to hunt Cape buffalo. Uh, prides of lions specialize normally in the kind of prey they're after. That doesn't mean they will only exclusively take that, but it's water buffalo, zebras, large antelopes, uh, elan, which is a about cow size antelope, these guys go up to 1,800 pounds. That protrusion across their forehead is solid bone. Uh, so it takes quite a technique to catch one and bring it down. And these lions specialized in it. They're out in savanna grass. Their color is tawny. You can see how they blend into the grass. They're out there waiting and not moving. This herd, by the way, was about 600 animals in that uh, herd of buffalo. Now, again, they're out of sight. Down in here is one of the lionesses. So they're waiting. And here's a young cub. That was, he's about 11 months old from what our guide told us. He's not eligible to hunt yet, so he's stashed off to the side, kind of waiting for what's going to happen. But he's not out there with them. And then uh, number two lion gets out there and tells him, okay, folks, let's try to do something about these 
Buffalo, and they start moving out. This probably less than two-year-old cub. Uh, they're ones that are now in training. They're trailing behind. You can see he's kind of like a young teenager, lanky and so forth, moving out. This gal uh, was passing by within about six feet of where I was and uh, never broke stride, looked at me. Uh, but buffalo tastes a hell of a lot better than human beings, so, you know, she wasn't interested. What happened here was we broke off following them that day because it started to get dark. And the next morning we got up and said, okay, let's go see if they're still following the herd, if they caught somebody. Uh, and when we came upon them, they were already having a late breakfast. And uh, you can see they're all around the animal. And they're all in there having their own part of it. They're not arguing with each other, except if you look at the uh, one with the teeth and draw, is telling one of the youngsters, get out of my way, this is the part I want. And um, pretty much over. Now, it was mentioned earlier when we were delayed about the uh, gut biome, and it talked about where does a carnivorous animal get their bacteria, that uh, they eat everything. Well, on the right-hand side of that picture, that's the gut uh, content. They don't want that partially digested grass and so forth from a grazer. But if you look, there are two of those linuses actually got their heads inside the abdominal, abdominal cavity and are eating everything. The, the preferred part of the kill is the soft tissue. So look at the face, which has been torn off, and the gut and so forth. But they'll eat the rest of it. And after dinner, they do what most men do anyway, but these are girls all lying around. Their tummies are quite content. <laughs> These two are juveniles that weren't in on the hunt. The guy on the, your left, uh, he couldn't even get off the ground. He was so. <laughs> and the other one, you can see his stomach is kind of distended. And so that day, we broke, we stopped watching him, and we went back the next morning, and here comes the 11 year old king of the pride, and it's too late, man. There isn't anything left for him. He'd been out tracking in his, and marking his territory. His circle or, or circuit was about 45 miles, and he walked that at least every week. Uh, had to drink a lot of water because he had to urinate all the way around that 45. Some of us have that problem occasionally, but uh, anyway. And all there was left were a bunch of vultures. Now, during the night, they had finished off, but then the hyenas came in and the jackals. The hyenas have very strong jaws. They break bone, they eat bone. And so there was nothing left. Some facts about lions. Okay, the first thing you need to know, they're not the king of the jungle. They don't live in the jungle, so how could they be the king of the jungle? And I tried to find out why that phase phrase developed. And it probably comes, uh, they are a dominant animal in Africa, and probably from our Western uh, European who thought of Africa as the dark continent and all jungle, so they just called them that. Uh, they're the second largest, just a l little lighter in size, the biggest ones than the uh, tiger. About 21,000 in uh, all in southern uh, part of Africa below the Sahara. And again, you got to put that in context of uh, Africa having a billion people. So, you know, it's not a lot of lions in comparison. They're like uh, the few wolves we have here that we have to delist because they're such a danger to us. Anyway, uh, do all the lions live in Africa? And the answer is no. There are about 250 of them live in India uh, on a couple of reserves and they're the remnants of lions that were all throughout Eurasia, and uh, they're there now. Uh, no natural enemies uh, except for man. The man is not a natural enemy of all these cats, but all these cats, without me repeating it again, 
are endangered primarily because of human beings, both in terms of hunting and killing them or trapping them and or destroying their habitat. But uh, the hyena is one of the major competitors uh, and they also can get injured while hunting. You can imagine what happens when you're going after one of these buffalo and he hooks you with the horn. That's the end of it. Uh, the hyena, uh, many of you probably have seen The Lion King. And if you have, there's a scene in there where the uh, usurper king, Star, Scar, uh, invites the llamas into the territory and they devastate the area. And it wasn't to Simba, the rightful king, and the females all kick him out. By the way, that uh, Lion King will be shown again at Keller uh, in August, if you're interested in seeing that. Uh, the mane they have protects the male when they're fighting with each other over dominance. They're the only cat with a complex social system. There are Elephants have a very complex social system, and so do the lion. They have signed roles. Uh, a nursing mom can go off and leave the cubs in charge of another female, those types of things. Uh, why were they sitting, lying around with their tummies all extended? Well, they eat 50 pounds, uh, and so that's possibly the answer. Uh, a dominant male who kills the, the uh, and, or replaces the male will kill the nursing cubs. Uh, he can't breed until the female stops lactating, so he kills her, she comes to estus, and then he can breed her again. And so that extends his line, DNA line, as the dominant male. Lion's roars can be heard five miles away. Only four cats can roar, the lion, the tiger, the jaguar, and the leopard. All 31 other species of cats can't roar, but they can purr, so that's neat. And the lion can't purr. And it goes into how the structure of their larynx. Uh, they sleep, they're the laziest of the big cats. They'll sleep 16 to 20 hours. Uh, Fluffy probably six, sleeps around 16, so. She's pretty much active compared to that. Uh, they kill 150 people a year in Africa, but who kills the most? Well, the hippo kills almost 3,000. Most of those are killed by on water when people are out on a boat and the hippo comes and surfaces, knocks them over, and they get killed. But the winner is this guy, 600,000 people with malaria a year. So think of the Zika virus and the danger this little creature does in terms of us humans and transmittal of disease. Okay, switching over to another animal, the leopard. Uh, I refer to it as night hunter because most all the time uh, they are nocturnal hunters and out at night. And this is a little ditty about them. The leopard. He is lovely with all his little spots. All along the jungle, he just gently trots. Such a lovely creature with his coat of gold. A lovely piece of nature, a creature to behold. So what's a leopard? Well, said mostly nocturnal, solitary animals. Uh, take their prey at night. They're, they would be great track stars uh, or they can swim very well, run at 35 miles an hour for sustained distance. Uh, they're bounding 20 feet. Think that what we used to call the broad jump. Uh, leap 10 feet into the air. They're smaller, 160 pounds for a male. One of the things they do is they, because they're solitary and smaller animal, they drag their kill up into a tree uh, to preserve it for over a period of time that they're eating it. And their ability is tremendous. They'll, they can take something three times their own body weight up into a tree. Uh, you hear the term black panther, not the political issue, but the cats. There just happened to be a leopard that has all black fur due to the recessive genes that we talked about. Uh, 
They're not a separate species. There's no species of black panthers. They're just, and one of the interesting things, if you get hold of one of these guys and shave them, you'll see the little spots are still on them, uh, on their skin. Again, it, we don't recommend that to anybody, but it's possible. Uh, nine subspecies all threatened. And as I said, they're a night animal. So I didn't particularly care for how we had to go find them, which was to go out at night and once we spotted one, use lights, uh, kind of disturbed them. And like this one wanted to know what the heck we were doing, shining a light on it when it was having a nap. Moving out, of the, it, you just when you see one of them walking and how they glide through the night, it's just fantastic. They're always alert. Just, well, okay, not always. Uh, this guy just flopped down and went to sleep somewhere. They are occasionally out during the day, particularly early morning uh, and late evening as the sun is just coming up. Animals are moving around at that time, both in the evening and the morning. And one morning we came upon, we didn't see the kill, we came upon this uh, impala kill, that's uh, impala uh, antelope. A fellow drug him off into the bush, kind of sat there catching its breath, drug it back into the bush, we couldn't see it, I assume took it back up into a tree. I just think of a leopard as just a very beautiful cat. And moving on to the Americas, uh, South America's big cat is the jaguar. The jaguar is a cat from the basin of Brazil. Just to see this creature makes the time stand still. Such a skillful hunter with elegance and grace, a very skillful cat in this jungle place. And then another one, jaguar has got power. A jaguar has got skill. But in the final hour, a jaguar has to kill. And what does he kill? Well, that's one of the things he kills is a caiman. Cayman is a crocodilian, uh, South American. Uh, this is a speckled uh, caiman. Uh, don't bother counting, there's about 70 teeth in that mouth. Uh, they will attack that animal on the water. And most of the jaguars you find will live along water, the Amazon uh, and other rivers. They also eat uh, capybara, which is the world's largest rodent. Uh, think of a uh, guinea pig on steroids. This guy is probably 150 pounds, 125 pounds. Makes a good meal, by the way, I, I, I'm told. <laughs> Here's a series of picture. We're Now, in this series of pictures, we're out on the water in a boat because these animals are along the banks of the, uh, and we're in the Pantanal, which is wetlands, so there's not really much way of getting up on them with a vehicle or anything. There are no roads or very limited roads. And uh, so we're in the water and they're looking out at us as we cruise up. And they're not concerned about the boats because people do fishing in there, indigenous people, and even sport fishing. But it's kind of saying, what do you want? Uh, I want you to all remember the size of that mouth and what it looks like, because we'll talk about that in a minute. But uh, gave a big yawn, and it was nap time. One thing about cats, unless they're hunting or doing something, moving around for some reason, they do a lot of time sleeping. Uh, look at the uh, sp spot patterns there. It's, I find them so interesting. And this guy stopped and looked at us and wondered what we were doing out there. Uh, kind of not sure about it. Then he does what most cats do, flops down, kind of relaxes. Here's a series of pictures with a couple of cubs on your uh, left, which are uh, about three months old, and their mom. And she's going to take them for a swim. 
They're great swimmers, and they have to be. If you're going to live along the waterways, you have to go back and forth and downstream, upstream. You're out in the water a lot. And so she gets them and tells them, let's head upstream. Went up in front of the little cub. I could just imagine him saying, it's not as much fun as mom thinks it is. And when they get out, if, if he, you don't see him telling them that I'm all wet and my fur is messed up, I don't know. You don't have a lot of imagination, but he sure didn't like that. But like all moms, she doesn't care, and she just tells them to quit complaining, let's keep going. Some jaguar facts. Uh, third largest cat, 350 pounds. And when I say length, that's body length, not including a tail, which is about two-thirds the length of the animal. Those jaws, most powerful jaws of any cat. And they're the only cat that kills by crushing the skull of their prey. Uh, lions, tigers, others kill by strangulation. They either crush the windpipe lengths, uh, uh, the crush and throat, or they actually hold the mouth and nose shut when they're hanging on to the animal, and that strangles them, cuts off the airflow, and they die. The only uh, natural enemy is a constrictor stake, a water stake to the anaconda, and a particularly younger uh, jaguar swimming can get around them, and once they wrap around the animal, they're going to crush them, and there's that way to get rid of them. Uh, about 1,500, they're up to the U.S. border in Arizona. Uh, in 09, the last known one was killed, uh, but there was one spotted in 13. And if you saw a video here at the beginning of the year, remote camera of that jaguar, in the mountains uh, in uh, New Mexico, um, excuse me, Arizona. Uh, they also have the black animal, uh, melanistic, uh, and so therefore you often hear about the black panther in South America. Uh, mostly nocturnal, except we, you know, we were in the daytime and they were out pretty much. They are solitary, they don't have a social structure. So anyway, we'll say goodbye to those guys. And take a look at the cheetah. Uh, to me, that's one of the most beautiful cats. Sleek, built for running. Please understand the cheetah's plight. For if you shoot him, it won't be right. So don't let this cheetah become extinct. It's the most beautiful animal in the earth, I think. Here's one uh, fluffy in spots out there just relaxing, laying on his side by the water. Here's uh, three uh, cubs. Well, they're, they're three-year-olds. They're being kicked out. The one on your left is a female. The other two are males. Uh, when they get into the thick grass, they're hard to see. They, lots of times they're hunting where there are trees also, and those spots help with the speckling of the sun as it comes through the leaves. I think that tear drop down through the face makes them look so beautiful. Uh, here's a series in which I took these two males, and I thought uh, they were talking to each other, and, and that... One wants to look one way and the other. I saw the, pic saw the picture before, but they stood up. They obviously heard or saw something, probably heard. And off they went and uh, got to communicate, one going left and one right. They got in there and then sat down and looked around, and whatever they saw wasn't there, and they, they were wondering where it went to. Some trivia. Uh, fastest land animal accelerates reaching uh, 60 to 75 miles an hour in a short distance. They're the only cat that does not have fully retractable front claws. They're semi-retractable, and that's why they have their own genus. 
And the question is, why does that happen? Why would that be? And it's probably this is the reason. They have to accelerate so quickly. If you look at your cat's claws when they're, front claws when they're out, they're very sharp, very pointy. Well, that would break off. So having them rubbed down constantly by walking enables them to accelerate very quickly, and that's their way of hunting. I mean, they have to run down their animal, usually a smaller antelope. Uh, less than 10,000 left. They have large litters, maybe seven kittens, but they lose 75% of them. A lot of birth defects, with a very limited gene pool. There's some information why that's the case. In Africa, has some breeding programs where they're trying to bring cheetahs in from different parts of Africa and strengthening that gene pool. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to be very successful, and uh, I'm not certain that if we were talking about this 50 years from now, if there would be very many cheetahs left. They're the smallest of the big cats, and they were kept for both hunting and as pets, but the key is they were not domesticated. They were still wild animals, and the last known picture of somebody was Haile Selassie with his hunting Cheetahs taken around 19 in the 30s, 1930s. And uh, they often lose their kill uh, to hyenas. Hyenas are uh, very strong uh, and travel in packs and can drive off a cheetah very easily. And why the leopard takes its kill up into the trees. Jackals, they don't drive anybody off, but they're sneaky and they go grab a bite when it's stolen. Here's a picture of a uh, spotted hyena on the left, and uh, the jackal I, I like is, that's a black back jackal, with, and his ears are really kind of cute. Before we go, we talked about spots a moment ago, and the cheetah has solid, small dot spots, Jaguar has the type of spot often called a uh, fleur de riz with little spots inside of the ring. And the leopard has no spots inside the ring. And so each animal has a distinct set of spots. And that's important in case you're being eaten by one of these animals. You want to know which one it is. <laughs> so we'll say goodbye to the animals. Uh, Goodbye, lion and the leopard. And the tiger we're going to leave us also. Yeah, we're sorry to leave, leave you guys, but that's it, folks. Thank you very much. Well, this is Irene, and I have watched a PBS special on the leopards, and they a couple times, and they uh, it's a really interesting. I hope everybody gets to see it. And they said of all the big cats, the leopard is the most adaptable, and therefore it's a lot less threatened than any of the others, and that they even have leopards living surreptitiously in Beijing, China. They showed at night them taking night pictures of them, how they've learned to adapt to living with human beings, even in a place like a big city. Very interesting animal. That's true, and uh, there's that adaptation by wild <laughs> animals uh, here in this country, it's the coyote. They live downtown in Los Angeles and all sorts of places. So they, yeah, and because they're nocturnal, they're not wandering normally around the streets in daylight when most of the people are out, so that's true. Oh, this is Paul. Um, I saw the strangest video, it was a documentary years ago, about two captured tigers, brothers, and they decided to train them to be wild, but they took them to a huge ranch in Africa, which made no sense at all, but 
trying to get the tigers to learn how to hunt was was very uh, strange. I mean, it was a lot of work. But what they ended up doing is that once the tigers got the idea, instead of h hunting solitarily, these two brothers hunted as a team. Yeah, and, and one of the issues is that uh, the cheetah, the two brothers born in the same litter, will hunt together and stay together. And sometimes they're many as three. Uh, lions, male lions, about three years old, are kicked out of the pride. They're coming into sexual maturity, and they'll hang around, and you'll have a whole group of male lions hunting and working together. Mm -hmm. And uh, tigers, uh, occasionally a female that's older, her cub will stay with her, and they'll hunt as a team. But uh, as far as having a complex system as the pride, that's not the case. And one, remember the lion, the young cub lion that was less than two years old, is out there learning how to hunt. So when they get mature, it's pretty hard to teach them how to hunt. Uh, about the uh, jaguar and its relationship with the crocodilian uh, that uh, lives in South America, do they, they know much about that, how it catches those animals and so on? Yeah, if you, when you go out, when you're down there, you'll find during the daylight, the crocodilian or the, cro the cro uh, is sleeping primarily along the riverbank, mostly has its mouth open like this one did. And the reason for that is to get sunlight in there and help kill off some of the bacteria that's in there from there, eating raw meat and stuff. They do most of their hunting at night, so they're kind of in a slumber Thing, and the jaguar is up on the bank and comes from the back of that animal, gets on the back, and then can avoid getting bitten and crush the skull. And that's how they hunt. And it's just uh, how the ecosystem allows the jaguar to catch kind of a slumbering crocodilian. Unless this is Bob. Um, I saw a video recently, and I think it was on YouTube, about it was not uh, jackals. Uh, I mean, it was, was not hyenas. It may have been jackals, uh, but they were hunting a solitary lion, and it's, it was very unusual because it, th that's what stood out about it. Because the uh, commentary was that this is not normal, but the uh, lion was actually the prospective uh, prey, huh. um, and uh, the lion was having trouble. I don't remember the outcome. I, I think the lion eventually escaped, but uh, the, the lion was uh, under attack. The uh, hyena, uh, the, uh, you can read some places, they'll say that the king of uh, Africa would have been the hyena if it weren't so ugly. Uh, <laughs> it is as, it, it can and will, uh, in a pack, attack a solitary lion. We'll try to take it down. Uh, jackals are small. They're, they're dog size and they, they really, they do hunt things, but small things. And, but uh, I don't think a hyena knows any fear. So they'll go in and uh, with, they have such powerful jaws that if they can get in there and grab a leg, they'll crush it and that's the end of the animal. Grant here. Uh, I grew up with Tarzan books as a little kid, and the Black Panther was the most romantic animal, I thought. And we had a little, uh, I still have a ceramic uh, Black Panther, a beautiful little statue. Uh, I was disappointed that it's not a separate species by itself, and are there many of them? Uh, probably less than 5% of the population. Again, it's uh, depending, you have to bring in two animals with the recessive gene in order to get that color variation. Same thing with the white tiger, uh, you know, and so that their rarity is based on the fact that there are just not that many of them having that genes coming together because even a black female, for example, mating with a normal striped tiger, I mean a, a leopard, would not in fact produce a black one. So no, it is disappointing because I, when I started, I always thought, well, I'm going to go out, find one of these, take a picture of it. But then 
didn't turn out that way. They weren't a separate species. I was, <clears throat> Paul, again, I'd read that there was more tigers kept as pets in the United States, you know, quote unquote pets, or backyard zoos, than is alive in the wild. I don't know about the statistics of that, but I'm not surprised because we in the United States have, a, depending on the state, have very loose uh, rules about maintaining wild animals as uh, our, they're not pets obviously, but in captivity, there are some federal regulations, but that mostly goes to trade and selling them and moving them about. And, uh, you know, uh, come on, folks, just watch the political thing and you can see people do strange things. So anyway, <laughs> sorry about that. Lester, this is Ruth Ann. Yeah. Um, I want to compliment you on your beautiful pictures. They're just wonderful. I, I'm interested in who you traveled with to each of these places. Well, a variety of uh, companies uh, and, and I would, uh, one was uh, Terra Incognito, which was going to territories that were hidden. Those were the people I went to uh, with in the Pantanal, for example, which uh, it's hard to get into and stuff. There are many African uh, companies out there, uh, and they are generally specialized with photographers, you're talking about six to 12 people, maybe 15 at the most in the group, which, uh, because you just can't take 40 people out on, uh, you get tours with 40 or 45 people to observe things, but if you're serious about the photography, uh, you may spend a lot of time. And uh, so, uh, but I, I can let you know and give you names from them if you're interested. Uh, Le Lester Safranca. Lester, uh, what uh, um, can you tell me about the snow leopard? I know that's uh, it's sec I mean it's secretive. It's hard, very few people know have uh, seen it. That's all I know. It's very secretive. Uh, there are not a lot of them. The territory is very remote and very difficult to get to. Most of all pictures I've seen of a snow leopard are taken by remote cameras that they trigger as they move through a territory. I've made. Since they were outside of the range that I thought I would ever travel to, huh? Up in the mountains of the Himalayas, those areas, they're 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 at high elevation, and in, and they are in fact uh, go in areas where there's cold weather, snows, etc. Marion Dearman, I grew up in the Ozarks in Oklahoma, and every once in a while would have a panther scare, uh, but I'm. Pretty sure there weren't panthers. I think the only panthers in the United States are in Florida. They were probably mountain lions, and we people were calling them panthers. Yeah, the, those animals are uh, in the uh, puma family, cougars. Uh, they they'll call them panthers. That in Cal, they're subspecies of that one group uh, that it contains mountain lions, cougars, uh, pumas and so forth. And uh, yeah, they're North American cats normally, or they and, and South American also. Lester, thank you. This has really been interesting. Um, Alice and I had the pleasure of uh, being on uh, several safaris in Kenya and Tanzania a few years ago. And at one point, we were in a, um, um, a national preserve. And we were allowed out of the car, the, the vans, the, the trucks, at a visitor stop. And it was still fairly early in the morning. And uh, the best part of this was it, it was led by a group of Maasai warriors who get their badge, I guess, by irritating a lion and then finally stabbing it to death. I mean, it's beyond my comprehension. But with this Maasai, we're at this um, tur uh, t uh, visitor center on a little pathway, and the guide stops suddenly and look down at the ground and kind of takes a deep breath. Like <gasps> and we all look down, well, it's kind of red. You know, I don't know what, why it's suddenly red. And then the guy looks up in the tree, and right above our heads, still dripping blood, is the animal that the leopard has just 
you know, hung up in the tree. Now that we go, oh wow, this is really kind of cool. Well, uh, suddenly the Maasai warriors get all tense and jump up on this rock to look out onto the plane. The part that we didn't understand is that the leopard was still there somewhere because she wasn't going to leave the food behind, even though the visitors had shown up. So when they suggested that perhaps maybe we'd like to get back into those trucks, we all said, sure. <laughs> <laughs> well. Yeah, yeah, you can read stories about people who will have a, a leopard uh, drop out of a tree onto a, one of those vehicles. And uh, yeah, it, generally these animals, I said one time, they're not uh, bothered by the vehicles, just like jaguars not by the boat stuff because they're frequently there. Uh, it's known to them that a Land Rover doesn't taste good, so why bother? And <laughs> human beings aren't probably worth it either, as far as they're concerned. But yeah, it'll happen. And you're talking about that's a rite of passage for the Maasai people to become a warrior, and they're still running around stabbing lions to death in order to achieve their uh, manhood. Oh, this is Carmen, and we have one of those subspecies of the puma, I guess, and yeah. on our property and next door, and it's a bobcat. Would that be a subspecies? Well, there? bobcat is a sp uh, its own species. Oh, it is because it yeah, sleeps bobcat. during the day. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. Bobcats are. Uh, so I said that's about the size of what the original cat evolved was, and uh, yeah, they'll they'll take your. They're good enough to take fluffy for a meal or your chickens, uh, where, where are our chicken farmers out there? <laughs> but, uh, you know, they, they will come in around human beings. They're not, they'll live in your backyard if you have a big enough backyard. He lived under um, an area that we had um, blackberries and we took it out and we disturbed his bedroom. So he moved on to another place, but he has lived on another neighborhood, an acre away in, under his shed. Um, and I think the uh, jackrabbits are tempting for him, and also some baby cats. Yeah. I'm not sure would they eat a baby cat. Well, they, 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 because any, any warm-blooded <laughs> animal is prey. Any that animal, okay? Yeah, squirrels. Uh, or oh, whatever. They, well, yeah, and one of the things with squirrels is they scamper up in trees, and it's pretty hard to catch them. But rabbits are great prey. I mean. Uh, so yes, we have photos of him sleeping in the driveway next door and, and on our property. Early in the morning, we, we have a picture of that. Thank well, you. Remember the tiger sleeping in the middle of the road or lying there when we're trying to get by. Uh, they don't disturb. Well, thank you very much.